This video will show you how to create fixture position data suitable for importing into Faros Designer. Two software programs will be covered. Autodesk AutoCAD and Microsoft Visio. Let's start with Microsoft Visio. This software from the Microsoft Office package is very friendly to work with. With a simple drawing, I have sketched out the background image to scale. In this case three sides of a building. The designer has carefully located the areas where there should be a pattern made out of lighting dots. Let's assume that for valid installation and manufacturing reasons, the exact pixel order can only be defined during installation. Instead of modifying this in Faros Designer, I choose to make the pixel setup in Visio. I set the first page to become the background, and create another page layered on top that uses the previous image as a background. The benefit of this approach is that on this new page I will only have fixtures, and that is useful for exporting later. Let's zoom in. And draw a small dot, this is my pixel for this project. When I right click I can define data for this shape. For this example I keep it simple and define. Side. Block. And increment. I could include the universe and address, but if I work in a systematic way I can calculate those values later on. I assign the first values. And insert a text field to make these values visible for easy reference. By using a more advanced formula I can format this to look better. Next, I copy the other pixels and define the pixel order by setting the right increment. Visio supports automated options, but that is not covered within this video. Once one block is finished, you copy it to another block. For this block you can select all pixels, and adjust the block number. All other properties are unaffected. I do this for all the other blocks and sides and adjust the pixel order where required according to the actual installation. Using the data graphic tool I can easily confirm that I have not made any errors. Using the color by value tool I can change the color of the first pixel to be different from the rest. Let me make the first increment red, and show the others in green. I'll apply this to my drawing. This helps me to verify the first pixel's location. Equally I can indicate the different blocks. Or verify that I have set up the side numbers correctly. Any changes made are directly shown in the drawing. During installation, this drawing can easily be updated to accommodate any possible change. After installation, let's reuse this data in Faros Designer. To do this I go to Review, Shape Reports. I set up a new report that exports all shapes on this page. I select to export the side, block and increment properties, as well as X and Y location. I sort them in a logical order. Remove units and round to whole numbers. Then run this report. The result is an Excel file. Using Excel to edit, I can create the information required to make a valid file for Faros Designer to import. I add the properties in the top row, and use formulas to define the separate fields. For the unique ID, I make a combination of side, block and increment. I format the number to be certain that it always uses two digits for block and increment. The manufacturer ID and model ID in this example are generic RGB pixels, with ID 0 and 5. For X I can reuse the exported value. For the Y value I need to make a calculation, as Visio has Y in a different direction to Faros Designer. The calculation is to simply subtract the exported value from the Visio drawing height. To prepare the patching, I can also use a simple formula. The universe can be a combination between side and block. The start address is set to 1 for the first pixel, and then 3 added for every next pixel. This logical addressing scheme has been agreed in advance. I save this as a CSV file. In Faros Designer I import my background. And then import my fixtures on top. 
As I did not add the fixture height and width to my import, I adjust that manually. Finally, I import the patch. My setup is ready in seconds. Next, let's have a look at AutoCAD. AutoCAD is often used to create drawings, but exporting data is a bit more complicated. Let's say strings of 60 pixels are positioned across these 8 lines. And video content is to be played back on the result. In my drawing, I create my dot, a simple circle. Then I create a block from this. I need to be sure that the center point of this block is located exactly inside the fixture because this will define my X and Y values during export. In the block editor I can add attributes to this block. Let me define the attribute line, a simple text value. I don't need to add any other attributes, as I can solve this easily in Excel later on. To be sure the attributes are applied to all existing instances. I use Block Attribute Manager to update and synchronize all blocks. I can now enter the line value for this fixture. If you have an existing drawing with fixtures drawn as blocks, you can also add attributes to these blocks. And use Attribute Manager to update and synchronize. Take care to ensure that drawings have a correct base point, located in the center of the first element. If the blocks have an incorrect base point, fixtures will need to be reinserted to create useful export data. To position my fixtures with regular spacing over the lines, I use the measure command. When the blocks are added using this command, I am not asked to define the attribute, so I use Attribute Manager again. And add them manually. I add a new fixture to the second line, with line attribute set to B, and repeat the measure command, as well as attribute manager. I do this for all 8 lines. Once I have drawn all of my blocks, I can extract the relevant data. I do this by using the attribute extraction command. I can choose to save the data in various file formats, let's select a comma delimited file. For this to work I need to have prepared an attribute extraction template. This determines what attributes to extract. In this example, I extract X and Y with two decimal points precision. The block name with eight characters and the line attribute as a single character. I select the file, and save the results as export data.txt document. In this example I will use Excel to further prepare the data for import. I have opened the file created by AutoCAD. First I sort all pixels in order of the lines, and from left to right. I do this via the custom sort tool. Then I add some fields to split up the pixels to the different strings. Next I add the properties required for Pharos in the top row as well. We can use formulas to define the fields. First I define a number for the lines A to H, as this is easier than letters. As I've sorted the data in order, this formula will work just fine. I use a similar formula to determine the amount of dots on each line. Next I split each line up in strings of 60 and number them. I then define each of the node numbers. In this case I will just use an incremental number for Pharos UID. But I do set the name to be meaningful, referencing to the location of each pixel. X is a simple reference. As for Y, I subtract from the total image height, as AutoCAD uses a different direction of Y than Pharos Designer. The pixels used are RGBW 16-bit, so that's manufacturer 0. Model ID 12 for RGBW fixture, and mode ID 1 for 16-bit dimming. I gained this data by adding a single pixel to a VLC map and exporting it. For patching, I calculate the universes, where each line starts at N101. I use a formula to define the DMX value for every node, based on the node number. If the actual installation uses lines of 60 nodes connected to successive universes, it should all be fine. Of course you can easily adjust the values in Excel if required. Let me save this as a CSV file.
In Faros Designer, I open a new project with a VLC. And import my fixtures. Next I import the patch. My complete setup is ready in just seconds. These have been two quick examples of how to use AutoCAD and Visio to create a setup in Faros Designer. Both drawing programs offer many great tools to help make drawing quick and flexible. With the internet offering great resources on how to use these programs. As for importing into Faros Designer. If you experiment with this you will find that freedom is given to make importing of any setup very easy. And if you experience any importing challenges, our support team is there to help. Thank you for watching.